At the end of the day, I'm not going to support any plan that rips away quality health care from individuals. This is an example of wish list economics. It used to be just Republicans who wanted to repeal and replace. Now many Democrats do as well. Joining us now, Democratic presidential candidate and chair of the National Governors Association, Governor Steve Bullock of Montana. Very good to have you on the show, Governor. Uh, great job last night. Uh, I want to ask you about the Democratic Party overall and, and the candidates that you were sharing ideas with yesterday and debating. Is there a concern? Do you have that concern that the issues that you all have platforms on will be not appealing to a broad spectrum of the American voters, which, of course, might end up to a second term for Donald Trump? Well, yeah, and thanks for having me this morning, Mika. As the only one, actually, that won a Trump state, I have the concern if we're not speaking in ways that actually connect with people's lives. I mean, as I talk about wish list economics, we shouldn't have to be choosing between what we don't want and what we can't afford, meaning that, look, we can make progress on health care. We can make co progress on college affordability. We can make progress in so many ways without just these trillion dollar plans that are mostly written for press releases. John Heilman. Hey, Governor, it's Heilman here. I just, uh, you know, I, I, I'm ran, running into your guys. Welcome to the debate stage last night. Uh, I ran into your guys last night afterwards uh, and, and the, the folks who work for you. You know, there's a less, now a fair amount of, of tension and drama. Uh, are you going to get to be back on the debate stage again in September? Which raises the question I want to ask, which is not just about you, but about a bunch of people who are in danger of being excluded from these forums going forward. I know you've raised some, some complaints about that in the past, but I, I really am having a hard time understanding why, for the first time in my lifetime covering presidential politics, the Democratic Party has decided to impose these arbitrary uh, qualification metrics that may reduce the field to, uh, you know, six or seven or eight people uh, effectively just a couple months from now. Do you think that's a right, th the right thing to do? I don't, John. I think that, you know, what we've always done is actually the voters are the ones that went on down the big fields. I've been so pleased for, you know, I've only been in this for eight weeks now, seven trips to Iowa during that time, getting like Attorney General Tom Miller, Jan Bauer, others on board you know this really needs to be a robust discussion because we got to be donald trump and we've got to have a candidate that can win not just on the coast but all across this country and it shouldn't be rules or others that winnow down that field it should actually be voters governor it's, it's jonathan lemire you've made your, your big pitch here the fact that you did win a trump state and on a number of issues you made clear last night and previously you disagree with some of your democratic candidates whether that is on uh, the Green New Deal or on Medicare for All or on the idea of, of some of your immigration policies. So my question to you is, is, is this, considering those stances, but also considering where your poll numbers are and your future is in, uncertain about the next debate, are you out of step right now with the Democratic Party? You're making the, you're making the case to beat Donald Trump, but don't you have to get there first? Well, you do, and, you know, only being in eight weeks, because my legislature was still in session, meets 90 days every two years, needed to get Medicaid expansion reauthorized, so saving health care for 100,000 people. But as I'm out traveling, I mean, what I hear is people want us to talk about the challenges of folks' everyday lives. I mean, that economically, that they're not getting better under this administration. Look, we all ought to be talking about as we talk about immigration that the biggest problem right now with immigration it's actually donald trump as he's dividing both families and our country so there's ways to do this i'm a populist you know pro-choice pro-union democrat that's won three times in a red state and i've done that by not compromising the values of our party but we shouldn't have to be choosing really as i said between you know what we don't want and what we can't afford. What we want to do is move this country forward, and that's what I hear from folks when I'm out on the stump. Governor Bullock, I think you've just um, hit upon something I think you need to make sure people know, and that is you do, you have a very progressive a set of lists of things you want to get done. This is, you know, I think sometimes people confuse someone who wants to be pragmatic with someone who is a conservative 
small c. Uh, I think you are somebody who is does have bona fides as a progressive. But l let's talk a little bit about the trade war. You are also unique, uh, you and Mayor Pete, in terms of coming from states where agriculture is so important. Um, and th the folks out in rural America have supported Donald Trump in an unprecedented fashion. They are also getting kicked in the gut in this, in this tariff war. Could you speak to that a little bit and how we can make trade fair but not give such a short shrift to the farmers in this country? Well, that's what it really struck me. I was in Ripley, Iowa, when a sixth generation farmer says, I don't know if I want my son to follow me and become the seventh. I mean, right now we're in this place where, I mean, what Donald Trump has done is he thinks that the tariffs will just be the, the cure-all for everything. And I don't think that America first becomes America alone. What we're seeing both in Iowa, what I'm seeing in Montana, is it's got to be more than a blunt instrument of tariffs. Because right now folks are losing money when they're planting crops. And any payments from Washington, D.C., from the U.S. Department of Agriculture, isn't going to make up for that loss of market share. You can always, we need to make sure that we're opening up markets, we're get, having a fair and competitive opportunity, but you can't do this alone. Governor, we live in a nation where mass shootings no longer make the front page unless the shooter racks up a number 10, 12 maybe, or above. It hardly makes a blip in the news. What's your position on a flat out ban of the manufacture and sale of assault weapons for civilians? Yeah, and it is. You know, I'm tired of lowering the flags. The fourth of the time that I've been asked to lower the flags under the, this president and President Obama were for mass shootings. I'm tired of the fact that my sixth grader, his first week of school, had to learn where to go in case of a mass shooting. Chains like Walmart and Dick's, they've already stopped selling assault weapons. And I think as a country, we should as well. They're not used for hunting. They're not used for self-defense. So manufacture and sale of assault weapons for civilians, you're, you're, you're for that, uh, you know, to ban it, to ban the manufacture yeah. and sale of an assault weapon to civilians. You're for it. I, I am, and I'm not unique in this. And I mean, when you look at some of the major sporting good chains and say, we're no longer even going to sale these things. You know, if we could ever just look at this, as I noted, as a public health issue and not a political issue, as a gun owner, um, as I am, I think that there are reasonable steps that we could take to keep our communities and families safe. But what you have, when I was growing up, the NRA, it was a gun safety and a hunting organization. Now it's nothing more than a dark money, foreign money organization that's used to try to divide our country. We've got to be able to take steps to keep our kids and our families safer. And gun owners and non-gun owners alike agree on that. All right. Governor Steve Bullock, thank you very much. Obviously, we have to have you back because this conversation uh, needs more time. Uh, we appreciate your coming on the show this morning. Congratulations for last night. We still have two more Thanks, candidates Mika. to talk to this morning. Congressman Tim Ryan and Senator Amy Klobuchar join the conversation. Plus, we'll continue to look ahead to tonight's debate as the candidates search for a breakout moment against Joe Biden. Morning Joe is back in just a moment. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories and you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.